Hi, Richard Knudsen here. In this session, I'll show you how, using the Dynamic CRM client for Outlook, you can turn standalone Outlook contact records into shared Dynamic CRM contacts. Now, usually, you install a Dynamic CRM client for Outlook on top of an Outlook installation that's been in use for a while, which generally means you'll have plenty of standalone contact records already entered in Outlook that might benefit by being shared with others in your organization. Now you can do this in the Outlook client by what's often referred to as promoting a record to CRM. After an Outlook record is promoted, it's a synchronized record, meaning that changes made in Outlook will be reflected in CRM and vice versa. So if you navigate your contacts within Outlook and pull down the View menu, you can see that selecting the phone list as your current view, as I've done here, will display an icon that indicates which records are synchronized between Outlook and CRM and which ones aren't. Here are a few Outlook only contact records and here are some synchronized records. Again, recognized by the icon. The other sorts of this list view also display the icon and one of my favorites is this by company option which sorts and groups contact records by the value of the company field in Outlook. Now if I search my contact records for a value, say Microsoft, I can see at a glance which of these records are standalone and need to be promoted to CRM. For example, you can see here that while most of these contact records are synchronized, there are at least a couple that are not. And if I want to include them, for example, in marketing lists I'll create in Dynamic CRM, this is a good time to go ahead and promote them. So you can promote a record as a standalone contact. By selecting the record, you can select up to 20 at a time and simply clicking this Track in CRM button on the CRM toolbar that you see here. Or, if you use the Set Parent button, you can promote them and attach them to a parent account record at the same time. Now that's what I'll do here. And I'll go ahead and pop up the Dynamic CRM Account Lookup, search for the account that I want to attach these to. And I've got a few accounts and sub-accounts. I'll just go ahead and select Microsoft. And once I do that, I'll see the Synchronizing Process dialog. And once that goes away, I'll have a nice, complete set of synchronized contact records for the company, all attached in this case to the appropriate Microsoft account record in Dynamic CRM. But now, let's take a closer look at what we mean by synchronized. I'll illustrate with a couple of personal contact records I use for testing purposes, one with my Gmail and one with my corporate email address. So first, remember that synchronization really does work both ways. Any changes I make to a synchronized contact record in Outlook will be reflected in the Dynamic CRM server database and updates I or importantly anybody else with permissions to make updates that are made in the CRM server database, they will be reflected in the Outlook client. A good way to see this is to navigate to a synchronized contact record in Outlook, open its form, and now observe that if you click on this View and CRM button on the toolbar, you'll pop open the web client form that goes directly against the shared contact record in the CRM server database. So then what you can do is pop back and forth between these two forms and get a good intuitive feel for how synchronized records behave. So I'll start in the Outlook form. It's pretty obvious how most of these Outlook fields map to CRM fields. Job title, phone number, address, and the like. But a few of these maybe not so much. For example, the IM address field in the Outlook form doesn't map at all to Dynamic CRM. There's no IM address field on the default Dynamic CRM contact form. And the notes field in Outlook maps to the description field on the default contact form in Dynamic CRM. So to get a feel for how this works, let's make some changes in Outlook. Maybe I'll change a phone number. I want to use my mobile phone as also my business phone. Again, making these changes in Outlook. And I'll go to the Notes field, and I'll select all of that text, and I'll delete it. In fact, what I'm going to do is cut that. It's on the clipboard now. Now, let's click on View and CRM and see whether those changes that I made to that record are reflected on the shared dynamic CRM record. So here's the web form. 
looking at my contact record in the CRM. Sure enough, you see the business phone that I copied over there has been updated. And if I click on the details tab of my slightly customized contact form in CRM, notice that those notes that I deleted from the Outlook record, that delete has been synchronized up to CRM. So we can see by looking at this that changes that I've made in Outlook have been reflected immediately in the shared CRM database. Now, what if I make changes here in the web client that is directly to the shared dynamic CRM server database? For example, let's paste that text from the clipboard, get it back in this description field, and let's go back and undo that change to the business phone that I applied in the Outlook client, and go ahead and save and close this record. So now I've made a couple of changes to this, and notice in the Outlook form now, I do not see those changes reflected. You might think it's because I maybe need to close and reopen the form, so we'll do that. But then I notice that they still are not updated here. What this is really illustrating is that you generally will not see changes reflected immediately because Outlook does synchronize automatically, but only, importantly, at a preset interval. You can see what this is by pulling down the CRM menu in the Outlook client, selecting Options, and then clicking on the Synchronization tab. Down at the bottom of this tab, you'll see the schedule for automatic synchronization. Mine's set to 30 minutes, and you can set it to a minimum of 15 minutes. I'll close down this Personal Options dialog, pull down the CRM menu, and select Synchronize with CRM. This is how you can force a manual synchronization. And you can see that I've if I open up the sync contact record I updated in the shared CRM database, my changes are now reflected in Outlook. So in this demonstration, I focused on how to synchronize contact records between Outlook and CRM and how to work with synchronized records. In other sessions, I'll show you how to work with the different kinds of map records you can choose to synchronize. You can see what they are by opening the CRM personal options dialog I showed earlier, and once again, by clicking on the synchronization tab. For example, I find synchronizing appointments between the CRM and Outlook to be very useful, and I use that a lot. So while this session was mainly a how-to, it's important to remember why this is useful as well. Remember, synchronized records become part of our shared organizational CRM database, which means they will be available for my colleagues to interact with, can receive communications as part of the centralized marketing campaign run from Dynamic CRM, and we can really begin to build up that comprehensive 360-degree view of our customer activity that CRM consultants always talk about. More on those topics in other sessions. Richard Knutson signing off, and I hope you found this useful.